Hi. Hello, my love. How are you? I'm fine. And you? So well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. I, I will have to say everything in Spanish because this interview later is going to be published in Spanish, so I have to translate. That's so problem. it don't matter? <laughs> no, that's not a problem at all. That's not a problem at all. Okay. Bueno, pues eso, le preguntamos a ver qué tal está y le comentamos que vamos a tener que traducir todo al castellano porque después pues esto se va a publicar en Reading y no todo el mundo sabe inglés. So, first of all, you have been in some pre-parties these last weeks. How, how was your experience knowing other artists for the first time? Sorry, say again. Sorry, just go yeah. No, no problem. You were in different pre-parties last weeks. So, how was your experience knowing some different artists participating participating this year for the first time. I always it was so much fun. I got to meet some of my favorite artists. I got to meet Chanel from Spain who <laughs> I died when I met her. She's so incredible. But um yeah it's, it was really fun. I'm a little jet lagged at the moment. I just arrived back home in Australia but I yeah. I had the best time. It I've wanted to do Eurovision for such a long time and this is it, it really felt like a dream come true. Bueno, le preguntamos qué ha estado en prepartis estas últimas semanas y que a ver cómo se sentía de haber conocido a todos esos artistas por primera vez. Y dice que le ha encantado, que ha conocido a Chanel por primera vez y que nada, que ahora ha llegado otra vez a Australia, que está con un poco de jet lag, pero que se le ha pasado genial. So, when are you going to go to Turin? When are, when are you arriving there in order to do the rehearsals and, the, and all the, the stuff there? I believe I, I arrive... Um the first week of May. I'm very mm -hmm. excited. Very soon. Um, I was going to do pre-parties in Amsterdam and, and Madrid, but I couldn't make it because I have so much to get done. Um, there's <laughs> lots, lots of work. Wait till you see my outfit. There's lots of work to be done. <laughs> oh, 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 that seems interesting. The, out the outfit is going to be different from your national final, right? Very different, very, very oh, different. Oh, that sounds amazing. <laughs> bueno, pues le comentábamos a ver cuando llegaba a Turín, nos dice que la primera semana de mayo y nos ha dicho que aunque había intentado estar en más pre-parties como en la de Ámsterdam y la de Madrid, que no podría, pues no podía porque tiene mucho trabajo que hacer, incluyendo el del traje, vestido, bueno, que va a ser muy diferente al de la final nacional que pudimos ver. Así que a ver, que se viene algo fuerte, parece. So, <laughs> well... <laughs> In your national final, there were all other artists that were amazing. Do you maybe have a favorite as well? From Australia? National? Yeah, from Australia. Um, yeah, I mean, the Australian final was tough. There was lots of talent this year. I, I really loved uh, Jaguar Jones, who caught on fire. That was amazing. Yeah. Uh, Witcher were incredible. The rock group, they were, they were very entertaining. Uh, there was a new singer in Australia named Jude York, who I think is going to definitely come back to Eurovision one day. What a spectacular yeah. talent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sí. Bueno, tenía muchos favoritos en su preselección, como por ejemplo Jaguar Jones o no sé cuánto, Jude York también. Así que, la verdad que sí, dijo que era una competición bastante dura <ríe> en cuanto a eso. Y bueno, so, I, I want to know how do you prepare yourself uh, before going on stage? Do you maybe have a ritual or something you do? Uh, yeah, I, I like to take a moment for myself and um, I, what I like to do is remind myself that I have done everything that I've wanted to do and I need to be very grateful for it. So I take a moment and I'm just very thankful and it usually calms my nerves down because I am, I just remember that it's there's no need to be nervous. You're doing everything you've always dreamed of. Sí, bueno, pues cuando se prepara para el escenario necesita tener un tiempo para él mismo y, y nada, siempre está muy agradecido de todo lo que hace y la verdad que le, le encanta ese momento y bueno. So, I, I know that you, you cannot say nothing about it, but what are your plans for the stage? I, I know that you cannot send me anything, but I have to try. <laughs> oh, you're very cheeky. Um, I... <laughs> I can't share too much. I I love to tell everybody everything, but my yeah. team, if I say anything, I'm in big trouble. So, um, <laughs> I, I know. I can tell you that it's very different from my Australian national final. It's a mm -hmm. lot bigger, it's a lot more uh, huge in scale. The outfit is a lot more um, big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got a new mask. I'm wearing oh. some... I can't say any more than that, but it's very different, I promise. <laughs> okay, okay. We will see, we will see. 
Yeah. Bueno, pues le hemos preguntado a ver si nos podía contar algo de su puesta en escena en Turín. Ya sabemos que no nos pueden contar mucho porque suele ser secreto, pero bueno, nos ha dicho que va a ser todo más grande, que va a llevar una máscara diferente y bueno, que va a ser muy diferente a lo que vimos, pero que no nos puede decir nada. So, we, we know that you are going to perform in the eighth position, I think, if I'm right. That's so, right. Did, did you like that position? Did you yeah. were fine with it, that? Any position's a good position. I mean... I mean, I, I don't think my song's really right to open the show. That probably wouldn't have been very but, oh, uh, but eighth is great. I mean, any position's good. I'm just glad to be there. The talent in semifinal two is crazy. A crazy talent in semifinal two. But, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. It should be really good. Bueno, le, le hemos preguntado por, por el puesto de actuación que le ha tocado, el puesto número 8, y dice que su canción igual no era la más idónea para abrir la semifinal, pero que el puesto número 8 le gusta y que que el nivel de su semi es muy alto, el nivel de la semi 2 es altísimo. Que por cierto, recordamos que en esa semi es en la que vota España, así que si queréis votar a Seldo, podéis votar por él. <laughs> I was just remember that in semifinal two Spanish voting, so if we if they want to vote for you, they can oh, do well, it. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know. Well, yeah, I, I... Spain is voting in semifinal two. So that's wow. why. <laughs> <No. laughs> So that's why. Um, and maybe do you have uh, any other favorite songs apart from Chanel's from this year? Yeah, I, I love, uh, I do love Chanel's song. I do I, I wake up every morning and I play it. It gets me up in the morning. But uh, for me, I, I love Sweden. I love mm -hmm. Cornelia. I hold me closer. Um, I love Poland's song. What a, what a beautiful man mm -hmm. and amazing voice. And uh, probably Estonia. Uh, there's a song called Hope by Estonia. I love, I love Stefan's song. Uh, those three are probably, if I had to sing another song in the competition, it would be one of those three. Mm -hmm. Bueno, le preguntamos a ver si tenía alguna otra favorita, aparte de Chanel, que ya nos ha contado que le encanta y nos ha dicho que le gusta mucho Cornelia de Suecia, que le gusta mucho Polonia y Estonia, que son tres países que le gustan mucho. Uh, I want to know as well, what is the best, the best advice you have been given in order to participate in Eurovision? The best advice I have for yeah. who's For, for anyone, the best advice you have been given in order to participate. Oh, in order, it's the, the best advice I've been given. Yeah, yeah. Um, to be to be honest and to be truthful, mm -hmm. uh, to be genuine. Mm -hmm. and, uh, for me, uh, my my song's very emotional and it hits me very hard. But I also mm -hmm. know I can't be emotional in every song because it can look in uh, disingenuine. So I need to. to find a part of myself that can be emotional without looking fake because I, I don't fake cry. I don't fake anything. Song mm -hmm. does me. So having to find that balance of emotion, but also control myself. So it is um, as genuine as it can. Mm -hmm. Bueno, le hemos preguntado a ver si tenía al, cuál era el mejor consejo que le había dado por participar en Eurovisión y siempre que ser el mismo y sentirse real. So, Maybe, um, do you have any other option apart from your song for, for participating this year or was not the same, your only option in order to participate? No, no, no. Um, I, I put forward a few songs uh, to my broadcaster here in Australia. There were a few songs that I was really excited for. But uh, being such a fan of the contest for such a long time and also wanting to be involved my entire life, as time went by, I realized I was losing track. It wasn't, it, I was writing songs that I thought were, I have to write this because it's Eurovision. It has to be this. It has to be this. Not the same was the first song that I went, no, this is right. Not anything. Yeah. Have to be this. It doesn't have to be that. It just, it felt right. It, it, it gave reason for every reason why I wanted to do Eurovision. It, it was my most purposeful song. So that's why we went with that one. Sí, bueno, nos preguntaba a ver si tenía más canciones aparte de Not The Same y nos ha comentado que sí, que alguna más tenía, pero que cuando compuso, cuando escuchó Not The Same, que era la, la canción que creía más idónea para participar, que, que le encantó y que, que tenía que ser esa. So, if you're, it's your first time to, uh, trying to represent Australia in Eurovision, so how did, did you decide that 2022 was the year for trying it? I've wanted it for a very long time. Uh, this year was the first year I felt ready. I, um, I'm an independent artist. I don't have a record label or, a, mm -hmm. or a, anything, you know, with anyone else. Completely independent. I know how big the contest is. I know how yeah. expensive. 
I know how how much work and how much energy you need to put in to get a good result. And as much as I've wanted to do it so many other times, I wasn't ready. I didn't have a clear enough vision. I didn't have a clear enough song. I just wasn't ready I, as much as I would love to have done it. Because, I, I mean, mm-hmm. back on The Voice in 2019, people were telling me, you need to do Eurovision. And I'm like, I want to, but I'm not ready. It's it's not mm-hmm. I didn't want to go in and not and not win. Do you know what I mean? And what we might not. Yeah. I wanted to. Be, people go, yeah, he can be taken seriously because mm-hmm. you know, doing what I do and dressing how I do. It's v- it, very quickly I can become a gimmick or a show pony, like someone that's not taken seriously. And I yeah. wanted my. Mm-hmm. Bueno, le, le he preguntado a ver si. Por, ¿Por qué este año se ha decidido animarse? Porque ya nos ha comentado antes que tenía muchas ganas de Eurovisión durante varios años y nos ha dicho porque este año realmente se sentía preparado para hacerlo, ya que pues él es una persona que por ser como viste y por ser como es, que no quería ser tan juzgado o que se convierte pues, igual en un meme o, o que... ¿Qué tal? Entonces, ¿qué este año realmente se ha sentido preparado para ganar esa National Final y estar en Eurovision 2022? Oh. Sorry, I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> so, if you want, in order to 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 finish this interview, I want you to send like a, a message for for the people that will see. Can you say hi? I'm Selon Riley, Australia Century for Eurovision 2022, and you're watching Eurorelinto because it's our program. It's like uh, how do you Euro Eurorelinto? Oh my Can you God! Pronounce it? That like to speak Spanish. Sorry, one more yeah. time. What? Euro relinto. Oh, we're gonna have to take this slowly. I don't speak Spanish. Okay. Well, well, you can say hi. I'm Selon Riley, and you're watching Euro relinto. <laughs> I'm going to put you in 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 big screen in order you can say. <laughs> okay. Is it, it, it one more time? Say one more time. Euro relinto. <laughs> Euro relinto. That's right. <laughs> But uh, uh, I want to say it properly, though. Can you say it one more time? I'm going to write it yeah. down. Yeah. Euro relintu. Euro relintu. <laughs> one more time. Sorry, I want to say it properly. Euro relintu. I'm so sorry. Oh That's no a problem. <laughs> I know that's a difficult name, but we were trying to. Euro Everyone de, uh, can say that. De, de, de rintu. That's right. I'm going to put you in, in big screen so you can say that. <laughs> e ru du de rento. Yeah, that's right. So you can, can say, Hi, I'm Selon Riley, Australian Century for Eurovision, and you're watching Eurovision too. Thank you. Okay. Hello, it's Sheldon Riley representing Australia, and you're watching on Eru do Rinto. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, <we're back. laughs> thank you, thank you. So it was amazing having you this morning after well, very very different in in the songs. So how do you have like um a great semi-final thank and you. hope you make it to the grand final in, in Turin? Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Same. Bye. Bye. Bueno, pues como podéis, haber, como podéis haber visto, esta ha sido la entrevista con Sheldon Riley. Ha sido majísimo y nos ha enviado un saludo para Euro Relinto. Le ha costado bastante pronunciarlo porque sí que es verdad que la R, la R bien marcada, cuesta un poco y lo ha intentado varias veces. Pero bueno, ha sido muy gracioso, ¿no? Nos lo quedamos como, <ríe> como ese momento tan guay que nos ha dado. Así que nada, espero que os haya gustado mucho la, la entrevista con Sheldon, que, que la hayáis disfrutado, que la hayáis conocido un poquito más. Y ya sabéis, va a estar en la semifinal 2, en el puesto número 8. Así que como en esa semifinal es en la semifinal que España vota, podéis votar si queréis por Sheldon Riley. Si os gusta, no, no, no os sentéis presionados para hacerlo tampoco. No estoy aquí yo obligando a que nadie vote por él. Pero bueno... Habéis comprobado que es majísimo. Al final no apareció con la máscara, pero apareció con unas gafas muy guays. Y ya nos ha contado cositas que va a ir con otra máscara, que va a ir con otro vestido. Que Chanel es de sus canciones favoritas, por no decir la más favorita, y que se la pone todos los días al despertarse. Así que espero que os haya gustado mucho esta entrevista con Sheldon. Un placer haber estado con todos vosotros. Y, y nada, me despido. Me voy a despedir con el vídeo 
con el que siempre cerramos el programa para que todo el mundo esté contento. Venga, nos vemos. Señoras, señores, ha sido un grandísimo placer. Y que cada uno a su casa y Dios la de todos.